from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage in Las Vegas, Nevada in the broadcast booth in the VM Village at VMworld 2018. This is theCUBE's ninth year covering VMworld. Nine years theCUBE has been in existence. We've been at VMworld every consecutive year. It gets better and better. I'm John Furrier, your host, with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is CUBE alumni, Bas Geyer, who's the general manager of Edge IoT product line within VMware and also the CIO for VMware. Welcome to theCUBE. Because you didn't have enough to do. <laughs> like I started my assistant. Keep getting all promoted, all these cube videos. I don't know if it's promoted, I've been <laughs> getting more jobs. And my assistant says uh, I should stop smiling because if you smile, people think you're not busy. They give you more to do. So you're a CIO, not that that's a hard enough job and full time. You're also running the product line profit loss for Dell Technologies IoT Edge. So that's right. Across all Dell portfolios. That's right. All right, so what's the update? Why is that a product line now? We, we saw a little bit of taste of Edge, not that impressive. Yeah. That, was clear and transparent. Yeah. We're still connecting stuff. Yeah. Intelligence is coming later. Yeah. Is that where we're at? I think the, the edge wave is coming. That people are starting to see when is that wave coming. Right now we're just hooking up things, right? We have a lot of sensors. At home you've done this, you hooked up your ring computer, Nest, whatever. But these things are just sending you information. It's not doing intelligent things. The processing is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger at the edge, and in an enterprise yeah. especially. And so it's a good time to be thoughtful about how do you bring all the things that VMware does and Dell does and give a managed appliance at the edge, if you will. And it's also good for the CIOs and IT guys to get ahead of it, because you know it's coming. This place is going to have, it's already have thousands of sensors and gateways. Yeah. How do you manage it? How do you update it? How do you run it? So it's an interesting time to look at it across the board. The power of Dell and VMware is we can do it both ways. You can give it better together. So hardware, software, everything, put it up there. Or some people choose to assemble it themselves. I want to buy my own hardware vendor. I want to get the VMware software. You can choose it that way as well. So we're going to give you a simple way to say buy an appliance completely managed from us, manage all, all the edge, set up an architecture in place, so and get ready for the edge computing revolution. So I was ask, you, you previously, last 12 months roughly, you've been CIO across all Dell that's technologies, right? That's right. right. Now, what was that like? What'd you learn? Did you become a supply chain guru? Were you doing digital transformation? What, what was going on there? It's a Jekyll and Hyde kind of a feeling because it's two different companies. Even though people believe it's within the family, it, VMware is independent, as you know. And VMware has got all software, hardly any supply chain, no manufacturing. Dell is the other side, 120,000 people, you know, a real enterprise company with supply chain, et cetera. So it's two different jobs, two different audit committees. And I, you know, each audit committee would ask me if I was spending 100% of my time in their companies. <laughs> and I had to tell them, I'm spending 37.5 hours on your company. And that was the truth, but you know, it is two jobs. It was fun because, you know. VMware you know, also dog foods a lot of their stuff, which makes it that's harder. Right. That's mean, right. Not more hard, uh, challenging that's right. in a sense, right? And you got to be on top of it. It is, and, and the, the thing with VMware was we have done the transformation a little earlier. So initially I thought I'll cut and paste that in Dell. That was the dream. But every company is different. Every culture is different. So I, first six months, I didn't make much progress in Dell. Then I had to get back to basics, the people, process, and then technology. So culture always trumps all of this, right? So you have to say, I don't have good technical people. I don't have interest in technology. We need to hire new people, and, and we need to value people who are technical. And then we did a process change. We created something called the Dell Digital Way, which is, think of it as Lean Six Sigma, kind of, but for digital where you train people that this is a new way of operating, et cetera. And surprisingly, the technology was the easier part. I mean, it's a hybrid cloud, mobile computing, you know, AI, IoT, but if you don't have the people, you can't do much. And most companies, as you know, have outsourced, offshored, they've gotten so far away from tech that you had to hire the people, you have to put so, value. So how are you managing your time now with the P&L, which is a business unit, basically, and CIO, which is you know, pretty much, you know, Whitewater Rapids in and of itself, you're paddling, yeah. the waves are crashing over the... Over the uh, yeah. How do you do both? So I think that the, the edge IoT job is a lot more listening job. So I'm spending a lot more time with fellow CIOs and CTOs and CISOs and the OT guys, the manufacturing guys, on what would make sense at the IoT, what would make sense at the edge. So it's, it's a lot of listening, listening, getting the strategy, rather than say, here's a solution. Uh, in the CIO job, it is, it is both blocking and stackling, 
And also strategically, I want to show that edge computing and IoT works in Dell and VMware. Otherwise, you don't have credibility. So we're putting a lot of use cases in, in, uh, in yeah. production. The, the third thing on, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about it is I already spent a lot of time with customers as a CIO for VMware and for Dell. So in fact, we are hosting a session tomorrow with all the CIO friends. They're just interested more in what is really happening in Edge, what is happening in IoT. So it's a nice crossover. So that's the logic, is, is you're going to sort of, as John said before, dog food it yeah. inside, right. and then bring a solution to market right. eventually. That's right. Make some mistakes, fail fast. That's and right. Then I would rather package. make mistakes on our end, <laughs> the customer. The good news for us is with the portfolio of projects you have, and you saw the announcements, we got a ton of stuff to offer on the Edge and on IoT. But we don't want to just overpower the customers. There was a lot of announcement even today. That is mind boggling to people. So you need to package it into a solution to say, if you do building automation, this is what you do. If you do robotics, this is what you do. If you do uh, smart cities, this is what you do. So package that into a solution that's meaningful. Yeah, let's talk about the IQ levels of the, of the current enterprises around IoT and Edge, because certainly the Edge is, is not that not smart enough to handle it, but it's just they haven't enough reps in the, in the game yet. Majority, so, yeah. so where are they? Are they you know, just kicking the toe in the water? Are they actually deploying? Because you got OT, which is more mature market, right. sensors, et cetera, we know that. Right. VMware's a software company. That's right. <laughs> and, and most hardware companies are becoming software companies. Yeah. IoT has to be rendered into software, yet you got the OT. How, how is the CIOs and the CXOs dealing with this? What, where are they level-wise, progress-wise, early? You know? I think 50-50. I mean, uh, the enterprise IT, as you know, is a little slow to the game. The consumer gets ahead of it and it is going to come through OT and other kind of places. So we, we did that in mobile, right? I mean, the enterprise IT didn't jump on mobile. People started bringing their own phones and they started doing things with their Blackberries and iPhones, and then we had to come up with MDM and other ways to get in. I'm hoping that's not the case in the IoT and Edge, but it's likely. So I'm telling my counterparts. They're going to bring their sensors to the table they're kind gonna, of thing. You know, for, this could have thousands of sensors and gateways for all you know. And the IT guys may not know about it. So the next hacking you're going to get is through gateways here, not necessarily through a phishing attack. So unfortunately, the skeptic in me says that that's how people are going to come screaming into it. But the evangelist in me is saying, get ahead of it. You know, there's an opportunity for you to look like a hero. And the security side certainly. See, yeah, don't wait for it. Now, look at the, the number of devices that's been put on. It's, when it's not being done by IT, they're going to have open passwords, they're going to have different versions, it's not going to be upgraded, updated, patched up. So I'm trying to educate you know, fellow CIOs. There's a good 30, 40% of the people who are ahead. There's a good 70% who are going to wait till it happens. So what, about, what about your ecosystem? Can you talk about that, what you're doing specifically? I mean, you got AWS, there's an edge play there, you got tons of Dell stuff, as you said, yeah. and you got a sort of ecosystem of both traditional partners slash competitors of Dell. Yeah. And these guys that, you know, like PTC for example, yeah. or others that, you know, just are out there. Right. And operations technology. Yeah. So what are you doing to put together that ecosystem? So the, the, actually the traditional IT partnership, you know, you're going to rely on your strengths with VMware. I mean, the same thing on how do you connect private cloud to the edge, same VMC software that we released that worked with Amazon. So that one works well, and those, those people know us. When you go to the other side, the OT side, the Honeywells, the Siemens, the GEs, the Johnson Controls, those become important partners. We do not want to claim that we know that industrial controls better than them. We need, we need established partners with partnership with them. The interest that comes is, when the OT folks get to a stage where there's a lot of information and traffic, then the IT guys come into play. We bring credibility to the IT side. You know, we know CIOs and CISOs well. So when you assure them that this box that is running your factory is really a VMware software running Dell, there's a lot more credibility. So I think there's a partnership. In fact, when I talk last to the industrial vendors, they want us to bring this cloud in a box. They say, we don't understand all these things that we have to put together on how do you manage private cloud, public cloud, et cetera. We expect you to bring that expertise together. So that ecosystem partnership has to be developed. Things like automobiles, I mean, everybody initially resisted this autonomous driving and smart cars. You know, I'm a big car guy, which I'm sure you are. Turbochargers and superchargers, yeah. those are important. All of a sudden you're looking, oh, it's a computer on wheels, yeah. right? It's more than an internal combustion engine. <laughs> so all those folks want partners, and yeah. they want a partner credible like Dell Technology. This is where the partnership of Dell Tech, not just VMware, comes in pretty handy. They yeah. want a partner end-to-end. -end. 
You know. and, and it's interesting, we had Andy Besserstein on earlier, we're talking about Arista's relationship to VMware, and he said, quote on theCUBE, I mean, a great testimonial, especially coming from a guy like him, NSX is perfectly positioned with the security model around closest to the app. Right. That allows the decoupling of security teams for the security team here and his networking team. Exactly. There's no cross-pollination, there's no, 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 no problem there. Right. Similar across the other te technologies, people can be highly cohesive That's right. in their work effort yeah. and bring it all together. No, that, it's going to start on the- That's talked about yeah, Exactly, it's, so it's going to start on the OT. So my head of facilities is going to bring a building management solutions. She's not going to tell me that it's actually a computer system, right? I wouldn't even know, I would be signing it without knowing it's a computer system. But sooner or later, you look and say, that's a massive computer system. What version of Linux does it run? How do I manage it? How do I patch it? Of course, it? you've got to, get a, you've got to get a Tesla S model and the, um, the SUV, just to, to be the R&D yeah, GM I that you are. To, you need to, you need to, it's a computer on wheels, you need to have it. Yeah, well, you heard you it first, it. I need one. Please tell Michael <laughs> Dell know that I need a Tesla, <laughs> both, both models and I'll, the new I'll one. I'll put in a good word for you, Michael. <laughs> you. All right, take a step back. And, and uh, you've um, got a great reputation as a, a great leader within VMware and Dell Technologies. Take us through the day in the life of what you do. You say you talk to a lot of customers. You know, how are you organizing your teams? Obviously, you've got a very emerging and no doubt relevant edge piece to it. IoT, obviously, right. we know what IoT is, but the edge is coming really fast. 5G, Pat kind of referenced it again, the keynote. Telco opportunity's massive. He wanted to tease that out further, but there's not enough time, it seemed like. But you've right. got a massive networking game yeah. on. It's going to go up crazy. How are you, how you running the team? What's your management style? Take us through some of the day-to-day yeah, -day so, -day life. So this is what helped me even managing Dell and, uh, Dan and VMware, is you, know, you need to have an empowered team, but you should empower, but not abdicate. You know, they need to know that you're there. You can't just dump it on them, but they run fairly empowered way. And in IT, you know, my batting average would be 80, 80, right? Because I've done it for a long time. So if you ask me what firewall to pick, I can tell you, I can tell you what network to pick, and I'll be 80% correct. So it's almost resisting the temptation to give the answers, let the team come back with a decision. So VMware acted fairly independently, but they need to know you're there to back them up, yeah. you know, especially political issues and other things you have to fight. So it's a similar model of empowering the teams. The only thing in IoT is you got to bring Dell and VMware together. And even though they are family of companies, you know, sometimes it's difficult within the families to raise relationships. Luckily I worked on both sides, I've been a leadership team member on both sides. So part of my job is to make sure people understand. You get along with everybody. I, I, I get along. <laughs> As I get older, I believe that with a beer you can solve every problem. <laughs> All right, so I'll ask you the same question I asked Andy Besselstein. What is the one enabling technology that you see coming in this new era that we're, that's upon us with cloud that will have the same kind of impact that TCP IP did on networking, which created massive amount of interoperability, created massive inter-networking boom, it yeah. created a ton of value, that became what we are today. I think, What's the one thing in the cloud that people- I think I'm going to give two things, sorry, because the common, sometimes we miss the combination when you pick one thing. When you do internet of things, when you're just hooking up the sensors, that's interesting. But when you pick AI and machine learning with it, then it becomes really useful. Right now we are kind of sensor enabling everything. So the, the everything is, the thermostat is telling you what it's doing, ring is telling you there's somebody in front of your house. After a while, it's just a lot of false negatives, right? I yeah. shut those apps off. Yeah. But if, if the house comes and tells you there's an FBI most wanted person outside your home, I've already notified FBI, don't go home. This is just for information. That's powerful, that's like magic. So I think the combination of the sensor enabling IoT and AI, I think those two are fabulous. Then you throw a blockchain on top of it, whereas you don't have to really govern it. I think those combination of things that we are getting right now is just fab and fascinating. That's where I see gold miners. People are going to IoT, people are going to AI. When you look at a combination, I mean, things cannot be managed with people. Things have to yeah. be managed and with And to highlight that point on the IoT, if you think about notifications. Yeah. If all the alarms are coming, it's like a hospital, what do you pay attention to? You got to have some AI right. assisting you to understand what's important in context at the moment. That's right. All these alarms going off, what do you do? No, you shut it off. <laughs> well, so you've got the substrate, which is the IoT and the instrumentation, and yeah. then you've got the, the AI, ML, and blockchain layer, that's about automation. Right. right. What you described was, I don't have to go do anything, it's telling me yeah. what to do or right. what not to do. Well, see, luckily I'm a lazy person. I want things to do things for me. I don't want things to tell me what to do. I don't want anything to tell me what to do. I want, you to, I want the things to do the job, right? We're not there yet. You know, we're installing all these software and gadgets. 
it is telling me too many things to do. I want my house to tell me, would you like to say $400 a month or $40 a month? I don't want to even know how, I just say yes. Yeah, push this button, right? Push this button, <laughs> yeah. yes, right? Yeah. I think you're getting to a stage where these things can be intelligently put together, yeah. where you can actually do useful things, right? So I, yeah. I believe that the mundane has to be automated and still not being done. We found a better route, six yeah. minutes faster. Yeah. Don't Great. even tell me, just go. <laughs> <laughs> you can automate the queue, send us the best guests, please, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Bass, I want to ask you one final question. Yeah. I know you're tight on time, we want to wrap up, but I've got to get this out of your, out of your head, is that you talked to a lot of CIOs, in this digital transformation journey with the cloud, some things that are going on, you're starting to see visibility in what multi-cloud looks like, what hybrid cloud is. Yeah. Um, it's pretty obvious, and you got the edge which you're managing. What are the, what's the num top couple things that are ranked up on the, on the order, the patterns that emerge? Top order conversations you're involved in uh, with CIOs, what are the biggest challenges, so opportunities? The, most CIOs, the CEOs on the board is asking them about digital transformation. Sometimes they don't even know what that means, but they're asking that question. So the CIOs have to be clever enough to answer, how do you do digital transformation? It's not all about technology, it's business change, business agility, and so on. Unfortunately, the, the press always says the CIO role is dead. It is true, every year the job is dead because there's a new role that is Kelly getting created. Kelly's story supposed to be dead 10 years ago, right, <laughs> It never dies. It never dies. But you have to reinvent yourself, right? Yeah. So the next reinvention is, you have to be the digital transformation uh, person for the company. So a lot of people, we all want to learn on, you know, how do you, what do you, what does it mean, how do you do it, where do you get the people? You see a lot of reversing of trend, outsourcing, offshoring. Now all of a sudden you want to do digital, you want people sitting in the room, you know, in-house in to do those work, so that is happening. And also, several jobs, there's a chief digital officer, chief information security officer, chief data officer. A CEO doesn't want to have five different people managing information assets. So the role of the CIO is going to evolve even further to be, you got to manage the whole thing for me, right? For the new P&L job, what's the one thing that keeps you up at night? I got to make money. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, people talk about you know, CIOs got to be more business savvy. Yeah. That'll make you business savvy. That's it, right. There you go, there's a that's nut, right. hit it. One of my <laughs> colleagues, Raghu, said, you know, revenue is very strategic, so I'm very <laughs> focused on revenue. An old expression we learned in the startup is if you want to not, you have a successful business, don't run out of money. That's right, so <laughs> that is my yeah, goal. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. It's theCUBE live here at VMworld 2018. I'm John Furrier, stay with us. Live coverage continues three days, we're in day one. We'll be right back, stay with us. <laughs>